Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, face clipping, how we clip the face of a horse for show uh, and for presentation, which blades we use and little tricks how to make it beautiful. So uh, this is pretty much what I'm using when I clip uh, and I discovered that this is very helpful when you clip. Of course I have a pink, uh, it's for a construction worker, so when I put it on I can keep all my tools in it and all the blades, my little razors, so when I go clip the horse I have it all, so I don't need to go somewhere. So it actually, when you clip a face, you use many blades. So this makes it very easy. Uh, and then we use mostly a clipper with a cord. And if you buy only one, I recommend this because they last longer and they're stronger when you make a full body clip. Uh, you can also buy a cord less, but then you need always to think about batteries. Uh, and they're not as strong if you clip through a winter coat uh, but both these clippers are very good clippers and we also uh, bought a little clipper for dogs that we sometimes use for the ears if horses are sensitive on the ears or on the eyes and nose uh, because it's easier to get between the little hairs that we can't clip and then we use many different blades uh, for the face clips normally we use the 15 blade uh, it doesn't cut too short, so the, sh uh, the skin is not shining through, because we don't want a black skin, we want the color of the horse. So 15 blade is a good blade for a normal face clip. Uh, and above the eyes and the nose, we use the 50, that cuts uh, very, very short, close to the skin. Uh, and then we use blending with the 30 blade. Uh, then we have two other blazes, 8 and 10. 8 doesn't take so much hair away. So when you have a, a horse, for example, chestnut or black or bay or white that you need to body clip, we use this blade for the body because it, it keeps the color. So if you have a horse snow white, you want him snow white, we clip with this because he stays snow white. If we clip him with a 15 or with a 10, you're going to see the skin through and he's not going to be snow white anymore or the chestnut is going to be lighter than he was. But this keeps the color. So we use this blade a lot. Uh, and when we clip a, a light grey horse, for example, the whole body, we use the 10 blade. Uh, and when we body clip a dark horse, a dark, dark grey, we use the 15. So those are the blades we use. Uh, and then um, you can go steal your husband's shaving machine. You never tell him. But this is very useful around the nose and the eyes. Just never tell him you took it. So we use this. You can find it in any shop. Um, and you have normally replaceable blades that you can buy. Uh, and we normally, when I don't steal one in the bathroom, I buy very cheap ones. Because better buy one for 10 euro and you just replace him. Um, so this we use a lot. Yeah, and then we use the normal shavers uh, above the eyes and between the little hairs uh, and also to blend to blend all the lines we have um, after clipping with the, with the 50 blade, uh, after shaving the nose, uh, we blend all the lines and then we use these ones. So that's pretty much what you need. Also, uh, when you have, a, for example, white socks on the legs, uh, we clip the socks only with the 10. Then you cut um, all the long hair away and then you can powder the legs with white powder and then it looks really beautifully clean so we just follow the line of the of the sock actually or the white marking so that we use the template how to clip the face having a wide variety of tools at your disposal assures ease of use as well as an elegant looking result what do we need for clipping the face electric corded clipper electric cordless clipper. We advise you to keep within reach different sized cordless shavers. 50, 30, 15, 10 and 8 size blade. Razors. So we're gonna uh, demonstrate a bit of clipping uh, and I'm gonna try to clip now as if for a show but half her face. 
so that you can see the difference it makes uh, and also which blades we use for different parts of the face. Um, and first of all, before I start to clip, I always take the forelock away because I want to keep it. And in case she suddenly moves or I slip with the machine, I don't want to risk a forelock less horse. So I always take this and put it behind the halter. And then I also put the halter a little looser than normal so that I can get underneath with the clipper. So, and uh, this is a three-year-old filly. She's not totally white. Uh, and usually for a face clip, I use the blade 15. I'm going to show you later the, the different blades uh, that clips quite short, but it doesn't make her much darker because I like to have her color. I don't want to see her skin color black. I like still to have it natural. Uh, we also try to clip um, without seeing too many lines. Uh, so when I clip for a show, I always do it a few days before so that it can grow a little bit and that by the day of the show it looks as natural as possible. And now of course she will be new clipped so you will see the lines a little bit but ideally uh, once she goes in the show ring it should look just beautiful not clipped. So I'm gonna start and I use for the face a cordless machine it's easier. Uh, we have normally the, the machines that has a cord, they're stronger. So if you clip many horses or you plan to clip many times, it's maybe better to, to keep one with a cord because it's stronger for clipping the whole body of the horse. But if you only do a face clip now and then, this is perfect. Before starting, always keep the forelock out of the clipper's reach as to not cut it off accidentally. Loosening the halter provides you with additional freedom to perfectly trim your horse's face and is a great tip to keep in mind. When trimming any part of the horse's coat, keep the horse's natural color in mind. Clipping the hair too short on a light-colored horse or surface area will expose enough black skin to change the horse's color. In order to better blend and hide different lengths of hair around the trimming lines, do this a few days before a show. The regrowth will better blend in the trimming lines, leaving the final result as natural as possible. When you clip for the show, you must leave the, the little hairs above and under the eyes untouched. And the same with the hairs around the, the nose uh, and also the hairs inside the ears. So you must be cautious when you clip around the nose and the, the eyes that you don't cut them away because then they can disqualify you at the show. So when I start to clip, um, if she's not used to the clipper, I first like her to get used to the sound. I'm not going to start it and come to her face. Uh, and I always start to clip here, where she can see. And I always touch first with my hand. So if she would spook for the sound, she gets my hand and not the end of the clipper. And that's a big difference for her, because once I poke her and it hurts, uh, she will have easier to, to spook again. So I always come first with my hand and then I clip. So my finger is like a buffer between her and the clipper, not to risk to hurt her. So. And this is one reason why we clip the babies at young age. Because for her, this was never dangerous or never uncomfortable or hurtful or scary. It's something normal for her that she did since she was born. Okay. She wants to lick my arm now. So, so I'm going to clip now the half of the face and then I'm going to explain you. So you see, I have my finger the whole time following the clipper. If she would spook or jump, uh, she will only touch my finger. So this is a very good help if you're not used to clipping.
and we try to follow the natural line like this thick bone here. I clip down to the bone because here you have a natural line. You never clip below that because then it's very difficult to, to hide where you ended your clipping. So here's a natural line. The eye socket gives a natural line. Uh, and here I try, here is a natural line too. She didn't come. Uh, so here I try uh, to make it as invisible as possible. So I'm not creating a hard line of color here, but I'm clipping in, with the hairs so that I can hide the line here. No, no. So that's half a face clip, like this. And then I'm going to clip with a shorter blade above her eye and around her nose. And I like to create a summer face. So my job is to make the nose naturally black, her eye naturally black as a summer horse. Uh, and then blend so that you don't see the lines or try to blend as well as I can while leaving these little hairs. So it's some sports to clip that nicely. Come, no, no. Change the blade. I know. So this is 50 blade that takes everything off. So if you do mistake with this blade, you're gonna see it and it's not beautiful. And here they have a lot of hairs around their nose. Uh, if one or two go, it's not a problem, but you have to keep everything around her muscle intact. Yes, I know. Also try to put the same pressure. If I come with a clipper like this, it's very difficult to make it even. So I try to keep the same pressure everywhere I clip with the same blade. Otherwise you will have spots unclipped and some that are deeper. So you need to try to be very smooth with your hand. And it's very difficult. The best is to train this when there's no show at all. Because <laughs> it's gonna be ugly first times. I guarantee. I should have saved the pictures of my first clip horses. Good girl. Hannah. In her eye. Make it a little difficult. Good girl. Good. Uh -uh. When I clip around these little hairs, I always put my finger on when I clip around. Because one wrong move and it's gone, that hair. And you can't grow it back very quickly, so it's important to protect them. Uh -uh. 
So now I'm going to try to blend that we don't see the lines where I ended with the next blade, which is a 30. That's the size between the 50 and the 15. And now I need to be light on my hand because when I like to erase this line, I need to get lighter at the end of every stroke that I don't make another line. So that's a, it takes a lot of practice. I did it for 25 years and I still learn every day how to clip better. And this horse is not body clipped. Normally for the show this part is clipped too. But if I need to clip a horse for pictures or I do not clip the body, normally I clean this part off too. And then I have an eight blade. And that's, uh, that's not taking so much, but it's just polishing a little bit that it doesn't look totally um, ungroomed. And when I come close to forelock, always a finger here if you want to keep the forelock. Just not to risk anything. And then we take the 15 again. You can never have enough of blending. So I'm always looking if there's a little line visible. I'm going to blend again with the blade between the shortest and the longest. That you can erase the line. So this face clip, if you never clipped and you like to go to a show, yourself to an amateur show or a small show this is enough this is fine and it looks proper and it's much much better than trying to shave it with a shaver without knowing but then you can destroy much more um, so for the first shows this is perfectly fine you're clipping uh, and later uh, when you feel you have you got a hold of this uh, you can also shave the eye and you can shave the nose but then you need to be sure to shave around the little hairs and also to blend um, the borders of the very black and the not so black. So that's very difficult. But I'm gonna do it on her just for showing it. But first we're gonna clip her ear so that you know how to do it. So that I can take either my normal clipper or a little dog clipper. This is perfect and they're not expensive. Uh, so we use a lot of this, especially if you're not used to clip the ears this is more handy also for the horse so uh, again i take the mane away just so i don't cut something off because it happens easily and i make sure that the forelock is somewhere else and then when i clip i try not to hurt her if she will jump away or if she will spook for the clipper, I'm not going to grab it because she's going to become more scared of the grabbing than of the clipper. So I always try just to hold like this, not... And if she's scared of her ear, I better practice her not to be scared of her ear than grab it and clip because I will earn time once she knows and she can trust me with her ear. So when I clip the ear, I can only clip the sides of the ears and what's sticking out. I cannot clip inside the ears. Then I'm disqualified from the show. So what I do, first of all, I like to have a nice little top because you never clip the top of the ear off. 
because then you get a round top of ear and you want to have a sharp, sharp little edge at the top. So you clip this like a, like a diamond, diamond shape. So I need to uh, clip a triangle like a V so that you have the top triangle shaped. So I'm going to show you. No, Shirin, it's finished. Come. Be careful. In the way again. Madame, come. So here I'm going to cut a V. So this little top here, it stays untouched. And then uh, you need to think about the ear. If you see it from front, it should look nice. But also if you see it from back. So you need to be sure you have a nice line also in the back that you don't discover it's looking like this from the back side. So I first look at the back side of the ear and I clip here a nice line. So now if you look from here, it looks clean. Same on the other side. And then I take the front side of the ear. And this is not magic that she's not moving. She was clipped since she was a baby. And this was never an issue or any, um, any pain for her. So for her, this is just another body part like this or this. It's not, a, it's not that she's exceptionally easy. This is easy to train if you train it from young age. So now you have the, the sides of the ear. So you see that it's clean, shitting, clean sides. And then you can cut just what's sticking out. So now you need to be cautious to hold the clipper straight that it's not digging in. So. No, no. So this is a proper ear. So you see, compare the other ear, it looks nice and clean. And you see on this side, it looks nice and clean and proper. And it doesn't look like an artificial horse still. It looks like an Arabian mare. Uh, and uh, the next step, like I said, is to shave, but that's much more difficult. So when you go to the first show, this looks lovely. It looks more lovely than the unclipped part. So I'm gonna show you now to to shave her eye without taking these little hairs away. Uh, and when I do this, I try to follow the eye socket. Uh, and you need to be cautious not to shave too high at start. Because if you shave too high in the back, for example, it's very difficult to repair. And it's gonna look like he's a, a Chinese eye instead of a big round eye. So you want to, to try to get the natural shape of the eye socket. So I'm going to shave and explain after. No, she didn't. No, no. So again, I put my finger on the little hairs when I shave close to them. Good girl. No, no. Almost.
I have the highest point on top of her eye and not at the back of her eye. And then I need to blend the line again. So I take the 50 blade, the very short one, and then I try to blend this line away. And from that I blend again with a 30 blade. Take the shaver again and blend one more time. Come. Easy. No, no. Easy, really. So, And then I do this like three or four days before the show so that it can grow out a little bit. And then I blend again just the border and then you don't really see the line. So this, that's the next step for if you're an amateur and when you really know how to clip and you did it for many years, you can shave the nose, but that's super difficult because then you really have a big line that is not natural. You need to make it natural and it's super difficult. So this, uh, plus you need to shave around all the little hairs uh, and for that you can use a, a shaving machine for people because then you can go over the hairs and they stay. So I can show just a little bit how it works um, and then later I can finish her and we can see the, the end result because it takes time to do this. So that's a shaving machine I stole from my husband, now it's mine. He searches and I say, no, I don't know, never search. So now we have shaved her side and now uh, I'm going to show you how to blend and this is come sit in. It's a fly in the eye. This is difficult to do so it takes a lot of training how to make it natural and you actually never stop to learn that. So this is something to practice far between the shows not just before because it grows fast out so you can have many chances of of practicing. No, no, no. And here I try to follow the line of her. She has a natural line here before her cheekbone actually 
So this is a natural line to follow as well. And then this is the part I need to try to blend that we don't see the line clearly. So I'm going to take the 50 and the 30 blade again. And I take the shaver again to make a last little blending. Okay. Very light. I'm very light on my hand now. No pushing. No. So now we let this grow for three days and then I'm going to go over with a 50 blade again just to blend the line that we don't see any sharp line here. It's going to grow small little hairs meeting these ones. So by three or four days I can have this erased. It's the ugliest now just when it's shaved. So this is nothing you do at the show or at least I don't do because I don't like when you see where the clipping ends and that's the same with this line. Um, is going to be erased by the time she shows. Face clipping. Clipping the horse's eyelashes, hairs around the nose and the hairs inside the ears will result in a disqualification at horse shows. Be very careful to stay clear of these areas. Have your horse get used to the sound of the clipper by starting the clipper and touching your horse with your skin first. Start clipping your horses from a very young age to have them see this process as part of normal everyday life. Clip the area in the horse's line of sight first. This will help calm the horse down and ease it into the process of clipping. Follow the natural lines of the cheekbones and eye sockets to better hide the lines created by using various length blades. So I'm gonna I made some drawing for you to explain better where I clip. Uh, I showed you already how to make a face clip. We clipped half a face. And now I, to be clear, made some drawing on this mare that you can see the lines to follow here. So what I do uh, when I do a face clip, uh, the part inside below the drawing here here. I clip with a 15, 15 blade. Uh, so you see here is the cheekbone of the horse. That's what I follow and that's where I made a drawing here. And this is the natural line of the cheek. So I try to follow this as well without making a sharp line because then you see it very clearly. So at the end I try to blend and clip this way instead of that way uh, to have a natural line. And that's the same here. I try to clip this way carefully. Uh, if the horse is not body clipped, normally they're a little more hairy above, the, above their eye, uh, then I can clip this part here following this bone with an eight blade. So again I start here where there is a natural bone and then I clip the whole part above the eye with an eight. And that's not to make the contrast too hard between the 15 and hairy. So I always try to avoid um, 
a lot of sharp lines. I want the face to be beautiful, not uh, the clipping should not be the eye-catching part of, of a show horse, I think. You should just feel how beautiful it is and you shouldn't see it's clipped. That's my, my ideal. Uh, and then the back of the ears uh, and the side uh, on, the, on the skull, I clip with a 10 because normally when you clip with the 8 blade you don't get off enough from the ear. So I do this with a 10. Uh, and here, when I clip here, I always put my finger on before I clip, just not to risk to take the whole forelock off. Because if the horse moves just a little, it can happen, suddenly he has nothing. And we don't want that. Uh, and then the, the side of the ear, uh, I leave always the top. So you see there is a little top here unclipped. Uh, now her ear is not clipped, but you see the line. I always clip this line with a 50 blade so that there is a sharp uh, the ear should look sharp and clean, not hairy. And then I can clip what's sticking out of the ear. So I have colored the parts that I clip with a 50 blade in black. Now I've painted her. So all what's black here, I clip with a 50, the shortest blade. Uh, and at the borders, I try to copy a summer coat of an Arabian horse that is naturally black around the nose. So I try to blend with a 50, not to make a sharp line. So I try always to be lighter in my hand at the edge, uh, at the border of the line. And I try to make a little V in front of the nose, not to have a straight line again. And I blend. So after it's clipped with 50 here and above the eyes, that's when I blend every line. So if I clip with a very short blade, I take a blade that clips a little longer and I clean the lines. So I do a 50, clean with a 30 and clean with a 15, all to avoid the lines. Uh, and like I explained before, these hairs, they need to stay. I cannot cut them off. So usually when I clip here, I put my finger on and then I cut around it with the clipper. Because if you clip this off, you cannot show your horse. It's the same around the nose. This needs to stay. Uh, it's not a catastrophe if a few hairs on the side will go, but it needs to stay around the muscle. So that's pretty much a map of how to clip and which blades you use. Lines and blade lengths. Clip the facial area as follows. Above the nose and cheekbones, underneath the eyes and the forehead, clip using a number 15 blade. Above the eyes, clip the forehead using a number 8 blade. At the back of the ears and on the skull, clip using a number 10 blade. Towards the front of the ear, clip using a number 50 blade. Shave or clip the eyes and nose using a number 50 blade. Always blend the lines that resulted from the clipping with a lower numbered blade, for example. Blend the shaven area using a number 50 and then a number 30 blade. Using a V-shaped trim above the nose and below the forehead eliminates overly prominent lines. Thanks for watching Lesson 7 Clipping the Face. Remember that clipping should be about highlighting the natural beauty of the horse. Practice your clipping skill long before a scheduled show. Follow the natural lines of the horse's face to hide and blend the lines created by using various blades. Unmatched passion. Those are the words that come to mind when talking about Marieta Salas. Her love for Arabian horses started about 60 years ago and never wavered. I was 14 when I saw an Arabian horse. I was completely impressed by, by 11 little mares, all alike. They were Congo daughters. This was in Jerez, in Spain. Year after year, Ses Planes has produced endless gold champions, and some of them became worldwide legends. Marieta is not only an excellent breeder, she is also a dreamer. She dreamt about a world where Arabian horses are seen as life companionship and not simply a means to an end, where everyone will be able to see that the true beauty of an Arabian horse lay in his soul.
and not only on their pretty heads. Uh, the first time a fall was born, that is my special moment. Because, you know, okay, when you win prizes is nice, but it comes and goes. So when you see a fall, a baby born, this is what impresses me, or what I like most about the Arabian. Marieta Salas and her Ganaderia Sesplanes are proud to offer to the world the second masterclass of Johanna Ullström.